Buongiorno. Having explored decoders previously, let's now flip it around and discuss encoders. As the name suggests, an encoder is a circuit that converts into binary code. There are many circuits that fall under the category of encoders, but here we'll just explore two examples, line encoders with and without priority. An 8x3 line encoder fits the general definition of converting into binary from some other form. Here, the other form is one, and only one, active input line out of many options. The output will be the unsigned binary representation of the decimal number of the active line. For example, if D6 is active, then the output will be 110. Similarly, if D2 is active, then the output will be 010. You may notice that we are missing a D0 input line. Leaving this off is a little shortcut we can take advantage of because no active input lines will leave the outputs as 000, which is the correct code for decimal zero. The way this works will be clearer with the gate level view on the next slide. It is tempting to call this table a truth table, but that would be incorrect. In fact, with seven input ports, a truth table would require 128 rows, and we clearly don't have that many. This abbreviated function table is only possible with the important stipulation that one and only one input line is allowed to be active at any time. If building a chip from this design, it would be critical to state this in the documentation. Otherwise, unexpected outputs are likely. Interpret this table as follows. If the particular input in the left column is active, then the three outputs should be what is shown under X, Y, and Z. So, if D6 is active, then the outputs must be 110. The logic equations stemming from this are straightforward. X is true if the input is the line 4, or 5, or 6, or 7. Notice how we use the OR operator between each of those D inputs. Similarly, Y is true for inputs 2, 3, 6, or 7, and Z is true for inputs 1, 3, 5, 7. The gate setup is simple. Each output just requires a single 4-input OR gate to which each of the appropriate inputs feeds into. Note how if none of lines 1 through 7 are high, then all of the OR gates will output 0. This gives the output code 000, which confirms what we said last slide about the shortcut with leaving D0 out of the circuit. Overall, the simple pattern could be repeated for larger line encoders, such as 16 by 4. A useful additional feature of encoders is to be able to accept multiple active inputs and assign priority to one of them. This prevents the errors possible when an encoder requires that only one input is active. In typical priority encoders, the active input with the highest number gets priority, and all of the other inputs are ignored. For instance, if lines 2, 4, and 6 are all active, then 6 receives priority, and the output code is 110. Notice that the device symbol shown here is identical to the one shown earlier. There is not a separate switch to activate priority functionality. Instead, a different name should be used on the device or its behavior must be clearly defined in documentation. Despite the more advanced priority functionality, the Boolean equations and internal gate design are actually quite simple. It is important to note that this slide is for a four by two priority encoder rather than the 8x3 encoders discussed earlier. Let's examine this function table to see where the equations come from. Beginning at the bottom, if D3 equals 1, then none of the other inputs matter. D3 is the highest numbered input, so it gets priority. Therefore, don't care x's are filled in for the other input columns. And the output must be 1, 1, the binary code for 3. Next row up, if D3 equals 0 and D2 equals 1, 
then D2 is guaranteed to receive priority and the remaining inputs don't matter. The output must be 1, 0. Next row up, if the higher inputs are both 0 and D1 equals 1, then the output will be 0, 1. Finally, if D0 is the only input equal to 1, then the output code is 0, 0. Now for the equations. X will be high for two cases, if either D3 or D2 are high. What if both D3 and D2 are high? That would fall under the cases covered by the bottom row, so X would still be high. This logic suggests an OR gate. Y is a bit trickier. It will be high if D3 is high, guaranteed. Y will also be high if D1 is high, but that's not the end of the story. There is a possibility that D2 and D1 could both be high at the same time, which is covered by this row here. In that case, Y should be low, so to be accurate, Y is high if D1 is high and D2 is low. That logic statement is represented here with D2 prime and D1. This product term is then ORed with the other possibility of D3 being high. Now that the equations are complete, the simple logic circuit can be drawn. Note once again that D0 does not appear in the circuit. This is because it doesn't appear in the equations.